Hello, Facebook friends. It's Carla, your online doctor, with today's Live in 5. Today is Thursday, January 2nd. It is 5 p.m. I miss you guys. It's been a while, it seems like. I don't know, with all these breaks and stuff, I feel like, well, I don't know, I feel like it's a new year. I feel like it's a new decade. Okay, well, it is, and it's pretty exciting. 2020. Oh my gosh, right? Okay, so nothing says New Year like a new exercise program. We know exercise is one of the foundational pillars to your overall health. Hello, Pamela. High intensity interval training or HIT may give you the most bang for your buck when it comes to exercise, but if you're new to exercise or starting over again, it is definitely not the place for you to start. Hello, Teresa. So as we age, as we get past 40, eek, you begin to lose muscle mass at an average of about seven pounds per decade. So speaking of decades, every time you go from 40 to 50 to 60, you have lost 10, seven pounds of muscle mass. Now that doesn't mean you've lost seven pounds, that means you've lost seven pounds of muscle mass, okay? And it's basically replaced with fat. Okay, but that can be slowed down or even stopped if you exercise, okay? We often come up with a multitude of reasons why we exercise or why exercise will not fit into our daily or weekly schedule. We come up with a gazillion things, okay? If you don't want to do it, you will find an excuse. A recent study suggests you may be able to learn to enjoy exercise by changing your perspective on the activity and your expectations of your results. Okay, back to that in a minute. Now, starting an exercise program often presents challenges that can keep you from getting started. Here are some of the most common reasons. Number one, you desire to avoid discomfort. Okay, getting hot, sweaty, getting short of breath, getting dirty, or just simply getting tired doesn't sound very appealing to most people. Number two, lack of time. Every waking minute of your day is already accounted for and scheduled and you're just too busy, you cannot squeeze in even five minutes. Number three, high expectations. The physical benefits take time to realize. You're not going to exercise today and tomorrow fit into to the genes from last year that you were hoping to fit into, right? Yet the mental commitment is immediate. You have to commit now, but the results don't come now. The results come later. So if you expect immediate weight loss or toned butt, legs, and abs, you will feel disappointed, you feel like you failed, and you will stop. Number four, lack of access. Gym membership, personal trainers, or even though that, like, like that Peloton cyclist thing, those things are expensive, and people sometimes feel that it's unaffordable and it's not worth um, all of that expense for the results, but you know you don't need all of that. But just that's another excuse that people use. Number five, you're out of shape, okay? You're feeling inadequate. You're feeling judged by others. I mean, I've been to the gym and I've seen people come in who are overweight. Um, they're, you know, and I, you know what I say to myself? Good for you. Good for you for coming and starting. You have to start somewhere, right? And number six, it's boring. For some exercise, certain types of exercise are repetitive and they're not much fun. Okay, so that's the, those are some of the excuses that people use. Now, the challenge that appeared to stop most women in the study that I read was what, if, what they thought about exercise and how it fit into their perspective on leisure and relaxation. Okay, so they basically were putting exercise into their leisure and relaxation time. That is not what exercise is about. So if you're putting it into that category, it's going to fall, it's going to fail. It's not going to be something that you're going to want to do. Now the process of we call reframing an idea is an active and dynamic process occurring every day in your brain. 
Okay, the study suggests instead of thinking of exercise as an alternative to your free time, socializing with friends or achieving your goals, you change your perspective. So exercise is a way of making those things happen. Okay, one of the top reasons people list for starting a workout routine is to lose weight. This is an extrinsic motivation factor, okay, that like cardiovascular benefits, lowered risk of diabetes, hypertension, etc. They may be great reasons to get you to start exercising a few times, but you're not going to see those benefits quickly, okay? So you won't continue, they won't continue to feed the motivation for you to exercise. So instead, you need to recognize the intrinsic benefits you experience with exercise. You have to realize it as a form of socialization or a form of um, of leisure, as something that you just enjoy doing because you're out and about with people. Okay, sometimes exercising by yourself is pretty darn boring. So let's continue tomorrow and talk about intrinsic motivators and things that are going to get you to enjoy the process. Okay, not getting on the scale every morning and saying, I haven't lost weight, not trying to fit into your pair of jeans tomorrow after you've exercised once and saying, hey, this don't fit me, right? We got to find a different way to make exercise fun in the short term so that you stick to it and you make this a really amazing year, a really amazing 2020. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned tomorrow because we're going to chat this out a little bit more. If you have any comments about that, throw it down and I'll be happy to answer. And I will be back tomorrow for another Live in 5.